Welcome back guys, got a huge fire going today, but this isn't the big thing of the video. The big thing is straps, heavy heavy stainless steel, galvanized steel straps on this shed. Strap it down, because you know I already poured the concrete anchors. But let's talk for a second over here, because I got something really important to tell you. You're either going to say, Ross, I told you so, or I can't believe they're making you do that. Gosh, how should I say this? We have a septic tank over there, if you're new to our channel, we have a septic tank for the house, it's gravity fed. We're downhill from the house here. That's going to be a temporary house, which is a permanent for a mother-in-law suite or whatever later. That's a building. It's almost almost 800 feet. Okay. The problem is is the drainage. Right now we're pumping it up to our septic system, 165 feet with a pump system, and it's okay. They said it's okay for the RV for right now to do that. They're okay with that. They're not what they're not okay with is when we turn that into a temporary house until we build our big house or while we're building our big house because it's considered another bedroom. The RV is temporary, so we can do this legally with the pump system I put in. But when we get into that house for the cold winters and stuff, it'd be nice. Got the mini split on there and everything. They said it's not going to fly, so we had to put another septic tank in. So we just had to get a $350 permit today. $350 for another $350 permit because we already got a brand new tank over there. Now we got to put a second septic tank right here. Here's another problem. There's trees here. It never ends, guys. But you have to do it. You got to do it. So we're going to put another tank in here. It's going to cost us. I got, I'm, I'm getting a tank at a real good deal for around around $3,000. It's a, a another 1,000-gallon tank. I said, why do I got to get a 1,000-gallon tank? It's only one bedroom. He goes, that's minimum now, 1,000-gallon concrete tank. The good news is the RV is always going to be on a gravity-fed system now, not a pump. And... This will be on a gravity tank. So it's a big enough tank to hold an RV and that, which is really cool. Actually, it can hold two RVs and that. We're going to put like a two and a half. It's, I think it's a two or three bedroom system in. So that's like two bedrooms minimum now. They don't even do one, one bedroom. So there you go. Money, p money i got to pay. Both those are made to push these trees. We're not picking them up and dragging them through here. I'm not messing this up. We're pushing them down there and leaving them for now. Get the tank in, I'll deal with them later. Still our property way down there, so we have property. Hopefully, hopefully they will let us put a tank in here. Now the soil scientist said this side is actually better than the other side where we put the tank. This soil's better, so I have a real good chance. So I'm gonna gamble that he's gonna be okay with it. So, the only problem is now we gotta push these trees. Ah, before I can even start, I mean, I'm starting that at the same time. Um, I have a massive help system coming to help me frame the entire inside that shop so into an apartment i mean massive and that's in a couple days so stay tuned guys we poured in 120 pounds of concrete right here anchor's not going anywhere we're going to hit it right around the frame right where this hook is i lined them up perfect so it can't go this way this way okay what they recommend is putting this on the ground stepping on it and releasing it so you don't get cut up Stay on it, guys. Woo! You get cut up with this thing. Whoa! Golly, you definitely want to be careful with that. You got to be really careful with this stuff. It'll cut you right up. Okay, I think I ran into a problem here. Um, because I have two. Most of the time, you only have one with a hook onto a frame. But I have two, so I think I'm going to have to use double bolts. I'm not sure how I'm going to do that. Well, guys, it worked. Got about five wraps around that and about two around that. But it ain't not going anywhere. <laughs> I don't see how that would go anywhere. That's around the beam. Nice and tight. I can't even pull and loosen it up. Perfect. Take the strapping. Be very careful with this stuff again, guys. This cuts. This will cut you right up. Kind of like when you're wrapping around the beam, wrap it around the way it likes to be wrapped around. Don't fight with it. it likes to be this way, then wrap it around that way. So you got to buy a lot more of this stuff than you think. If you're going to do this to a tiny home, a shed, an RV, a trailer, you want to uh, buy. If if, if you if you're going to wrap it around a beam. And you want to buy two of these for each side. Sometimes these come with just a hook you can hook on the frame. And you just need one. I don't trust those because when it's hooked on the frame, if the wind blows and shakes it, one hook can come on loose. Right about like that. So the grooves this way. 
you gotta push this right through the bolt, because there's a slice in the bolt, it goes right through. This is why you gotta wear gloves, guys. This stuff is sharp. This will cut you right up. A little bit more than you think. I usually do the top one first, is the way I do it. I don't know if it's right, but just screw it on, hand screw it on, okay? Make sure there's no dirt in there. And just give it a couple twists. And it's gonna bend it. Oh, don't let it fall. Keep it lined up nice and straight. Straight as you can. It'll curve right around that. Do it like five times. Get it like five wraps on this sucker. Tap this through. There we go. Now I can get to my my other one. You see how it's sliding in the notch? There's another notch there for a wrench. It's sliding right in the groove. So I'm going to tighten that up. Gosh, it's hard to... When you put these in... Is that thing rolling? This is a good example, guys. If this can barely move through here, if you wrapped around twice, you'd still be fine. I can't even get it out this way. You know what I'm saying? This is a good idea. It's just... Kind of whoever invented these. I don't know. I mean, there's got to be a better way. What it is, is I got the cement too far down. <clears throat> wow, I'm stuck here, guys. So I'm not gonna label this video how to put in anchors. I'm gonna label this video a newbie putting in an anchor for a shed. Not knowing what the heck he's doing. So guys, what I did is I took the bottom strap and tightened it one more. When you can play the guitar on them, you know they're tight. Once that ground gets all saturated and dirt, those hooks won't come out. This burnt a lot. This burnt a lot more than I thought it would burn today. I mean, burnt it almost all. Well, not about half of it. Easy, easily half of it. Easy. So this is what I've been doing all day. This is what I do all day. I'm gonna throw this big log in there. I'm gonna put the camera down. It's gonna take a little bit. There's dirt. We pulled literally pulled them right out of the ground and shoved them right here. So, so it's gonna take a little bit, guys. I might have some good pine to burn later. Oh yeah, I'm glad to see this going. I'm so sick of looking at this, and I'm sure my neighbors are sick of looking at this too, but they gotta understand. I'm working my butt off over here. I was up early this morning. Fred had me up at 6.30. He thought that it was 8.30, and he's like, you're gonna be late, get up, hurry up, we gotta go. I was like, uh, no, it's 6.30. So, I did get up and I, I went in town and I got all this stuff done for the permitting. Um, that's all done. So, and then we came home and I did video stuff and it's been a crazy, crazy couple of days here. Our, my family is coming in tomorrow and then his family will be here the next day. I'm super excited about getting the apartment done because then I can start painting again and doing some of my crafts. I haven't really been able to do very much of my painting because I don't really have a spot where I can just relax, you know? Like in the RV, I've got Ross and he's always asking me questions and do this and do that and uh, uh, uh. And I don't have a place where I can just, you know, like decompress and just chill out. So I'm really, really looking forward to having the apartment and just being able to him have his space, me have my space. The girls have their space and everybody being able to just chill out a little bit. I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, I think Fred's looking forward to it too. Not that we, I mean, it doesn't bother us being in the RV, but I'm really looking forward to having a place where I can just paint and just, just chill, you know? Anyways, you guys have a good night and thanks for watching and we will see you later.